Hey, hey, hey. All right, so it's about time that I finally get to talking about Devin Booker this postseason as I, along with many other people that I've been seeing on Twitter the past couple of days, especially after last night's game. But for the past couple of weeks now, me and a few other people that I've been seeing on Twitter have been saying that Devin Booker is one of, if not the best players currently in the playoffs, just again, based on how he's been doing. To reinforce that with some numbers, through his nine postseason games so far this year, he's averaging a hair under 37 points, over 7 assists, 5 rebounds, while also getting 2 steals and a block per game on 62, 51, 87 shooting splits, which is absolutely ridiculous. And now with no CP3 on the court uh, for the games 3-4, and he's already been ruled out for game 5, Devin Booker has taken over more of, of a point guard role for the Suns team. They've gotten back-to-back -back wins to tie the gate or series at 2, and just a little cherry on top, Devin Booker actually had a career high in assists in the playoffs last night with his 12 assists. But enough of the numbers, let's actually break down what Devin Booker was doing on the court that was making him, again, for another night, just such a special player. One thing that's been very impressive with Booker so far in this postseason is that even though he's been putting up amazing scoring numbers, he doesn't necessarily need a lot of plays ran for him. He's so good at finding his shot within the flow of an offense, and in this one, especially just in transition, he was absolutely killing the Nuggets on that side of the ball. Here he gets things started by driving at Contavious Colwell Pope with a brilliant spin move, seals him off and has a wide open lane to the rim for the easy lay-in. And then again, Phoenix in a little bit of a hole early, they get a stop and Booker again just pushes it in transition, hits a crossover, drives right, gets to the rim and has a tough finish to close the gap. As the game went on, he seemed very comfortable getting to that free throw line area spot for pull up middies and again in transition as he hits a few here. Next, he ups the difficulty on this play as he catches in transition, drives at Aaron Gordon who stops the initial drive so Booker slams on the brake, stops on a dime, steps back and hits a tough mid-range shot over Aaron Gordon. And in a game where he didn't shoot that many threes, he still hit them at a high clip as you can see on these two plays here. First, just some great ball movement as the defense is not set, they're left scrambling, Jokic is sitting in the paint not rotating, ball finds Booker for a catch and shoot three. And then by this point, late in the third quarter, you could tell that he was really feeling the jump shot, as here, he takes it, the ball up in transition once again, gets a screen from Jock Landau, Jokic is way too far deep at the drop, and that is an easy pull-up three for Devin Booker, who was rarely, rarely missing in a game. Overall, Devin Booker is just such an effortless, you know, high ethics scorer, as you know, the Twitter Twitter universe likes to call guys like him, were able to get buckets at insane and efficient rates. Something that's really fun to do is to look back across his box scores from this postseason and just compare his points to the amount of shots that he's attempting per game. As you can see, there are some good ones where he had 38 points on 22 shots in game two against the Clippers. Then he had 47 on 27 shots in their closeout game in game five of the first round. Then this series, the past two games, he's had 47 points on 25 shots and then recently 36 points on 18 shot attempts, which is stuff that we have never seen before. I know there was some stat going around that uh, he is the first player to be averaging, I think it's 35 points on 70% shooting or greater across his first nine postseason games, or it might be 60%, I forget. I forget the exact numbers, but he beat out Michael Jordan's streak, which is all you have to know for that stat to be insane. I mean, when the guy is hitting double team, the pull up threes like this, just straight water, you know, barely, that barely moves, you know he's got something going for him. But the one thing perhaps more impressive than the scoring for Booker in this game was his passing, as his evolution in this facet of his game across his entire career has been really fun to watch as he has grown each and every year, going from playing with scrubs and never getting assists and people calling him a you know ball hog stat sheet stuffing scorer and stuff like that to now where he looks so comfortable and poised against any sort of double team or trap that comes his way and he just distributes the ball so effortlessly almost as effortlessly as he scores for starters the suns ran a lot of double drag with uh, a kd and Aiton for the most part being the usual screen partners that they come to the top of the key both set a screen for Devin Booker to run off of, and he had a lot of nice um, you know, dishes in between the defenders to DeAndre Ayton on these plays. 
But then there were also a lot of instances where he would get doubled off of this double drag action and it would be on Booker to make sure that he can create the passing lanes by holding onto the ball as long as possible, dragging the defense as far away from their responsibilities as possible, you know, manipulate the defense to make the shots easier for his teammates. This play is a great example of this as, again, you can see the double drag is being set with Durant and Jacques Landale. Jokic comes up and doubles him, at least shows a double as he runs back to Landale. And you can see Booker really takes his time, attacks Jokic again to make sure he can't go back into the paint. And ultimately, the weak side, you can see Terrence Ross slides up from the corner, making that a much easier pass and a tougher closeout for Jeff Green, and it is a swish. Or this play here, late in the shot clock, five seconds left, he's looking like he's going to ISO Bruce Brown. Aaron Gordon sends a late double to make sure that Booker can't get a shot off. And it should be, normally would be a swing over to Durant, but Booker notices Jamal Murray is already closing out on that. Jokic is left in the paint and has Jock Landell in his way leaving Shamit wide open in the corner. Booker fires a great no-look skip pass over the Shamit, who was red hot in the fourth quarter, hit a bunch of threes, and this was one of them. And then one last pass to highlight here, very similar to the uh, play from two plays ago. Double drag again, Aiton back in the game. Booker attacks Jokic so that the double team has to stay on him. Jokic can't fall back into the paint. And it again leaves uh, Michael Porter Jr., on that weak side positioning, left with a, having to guard two guys with Eaton and TJ Warren in the corner. And Booker, again, with a double team. And he makes the beautiful read here that Eaton has MPJ sealed. So he lofts it into Eaton, who gets the and one. And I know that a lot of people have been hyping up the Warriors Lakers series because that has two of the biggest names in NBA history going at it. And don't get me wrong, that is a very good series, it's entertaining, every fan has their right to want to watch whatever they want to watch. But part of me almost feels like a lot of people are focusing too much on that series and missing out on some really great basketball in this Suns Nuggets series. Now is it gross when anyone outside of Booker, uh, KD, or Jokic has the ball? Absolutely, but that's part of the fun of it because it just... There's such a distinct contrast in the star level in this series amongst the players that it just makes you appreciate when those three are cooking even more. But even just keeping it simple, at the end of the day, these are two of the most high-powered and efficient offenses in the NBA, and to see them just throw haymakers at each other for 48 minutes a night has been really fun to watch. Um, and the lack of defense just makes it that much better because they're throwing whatever they can at the other team's superstars, Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. There's been a lot of fun adjustments. And with the series tied at 2-2, it is now a best of three. And I'm really hoping that we can get a game seven out of this one because that shit will be riveting. Anyway, that's enough for me on this one. Again, pay more attention to Devin Booker this postseason if you haven't been yet. And as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter. I'll throw my uh, at on the screen down below. So you can hit me up on there. Anyway, have a good one.